right. Welcome to the Consume Report, episode four, I believe. Uh, this is going to be about my insights regarding double deciding. Uh, it's been something I've been really working on um, since almost since I got into OPS. Um, just you know the superpower of double deciding, what they're doing. Trying to wrap my brain around that. And so I've had a couple of insights about it. Um, I think I'm going to start over here. So we have the OODA loop here, right? Observe, orient, decide, act. This is a decision-making, you know, model. You observe something, you orient to it based on whatever. You make a decision and then you act. And then you observe the effects of the act action and then you know you're in this loop and it occurred to me literally today that regarding double deciding people being able to go back and forth between oh this is what I do this is what other people do this is why I do it this is what you know and just being able to put that all together it occurred to me that in a way they're kind of using the OODA loop in reverse. So, uh, you know, uh, somebody who double decides, or a DE, I guess, um, see somebody do something, and then, I mean, say they don't know the person or whatever, it'll just, uh, but if they did, they might ask a question here, you know, uh, DE is about asking questions. <clears throat> Um, they see, see somebody do something and it's just like, okay, well, what, why did you do that? What, you know, you had choices. There's always a choice. Why did you do that? What criteria, you know, were you using, did you use to make that choice? You know, uh, and then it's like, they, it goes back to observation. It's like, okay, uh, this person who did this thing, they, you know, gathered some information and then they made some meaning out of it some decision-making criteria, sensory, and, you know, some pattern, some sensory. And then they made a choice based on that, and then they did a thing. So I think what double deciders can do, and maybe these, is, like, they can see somebody do something, and then, and this has always kind of bothered me, because sometimes I'll do something, and people will start, like, instead of asking me why I did it, they'll just assume a reason, like accuse me of it, and then and then it's almost like a test, like, okay, am I going to explain myself? Like, no, you're wrong because, or <clears throat> whatever. So, but yeah, I think the OODA loop in reverse kind of gives, a, is kind of what double deciders might be doing with other people. It's like, oh, people are doing this. It's likely they're doing this. And then they check in and through experience, they just learn like, oh, when people are doing this, they're probably, this is probably why they're doing it that way. And then they can, you know, they get to know people. And then by through that, they get to know themselves in a way. It's like, oh yeah, well I do it this way and they do it this way. So we're just, and you know, kind of a back and forth and having that kind of nuance. Which kind of brings me over to here. There was a video that Rose V, or Ve, I don't know how it's pronounced, um, made about how she saw her FE and what she was doing with her DE. And so when she met a person, she would she said like, "Oh, I," you know, she starts talking to them, and then immediately she starts to perceive like their network. Who do they know? Who are they likely to know? You know uh, what? you know, their connections to different people, you know, say like work or family or friends, or this is my very unnuanced, um, you know, in, uh, representation of a network, a person's network. But then there was like a big and small. So it was like, okay, you know, uh, well, her video explains it better, but um, it, it just, it just shows there, there's like, it's like a three dimensional, this network. And then it's like, there's this, dimensions to it which to me when I've met double deciders in the past it was always kind of um, 
I, I never understood really the uh, the levels of relationship and how concrete it seemed to them. It's like, oh yeah, no, that person's just an acquaintance. That person is just you know this or you know they're a very good friend or they're a best friend or you know they're a friend. You know, it was all these uh, the nuance to the level of the relationship. I never really understood that. I never, I would never label relationships. Um, but I noticed other people did, and I. But I think this is what's going on. You're, you're <clears throat> seeing somebody's, you know, network and where you are in their network, and you know the level of connection, and probably also seeing just the whole spectrum of how other people do their relationships. And the closeness and the you know uh, level of trust, and uh, you know the, uh, I, it's just just so far beyond me at this point. But I, I'm starting to even just get a peek, I think, behind the curtain. So then this reminded me of a Japanese proverb I read a long time ago. So when the character of a man is not clear, look to his friends. So it's like you can tell who somebody is, maybe, like by their actions, by who they hang out with. What, what kind of people do they hang out with? What kind of people do they tolerate? You know, is it a good thing, a bad thing? Um, I thought that was very interesting. And then I also just am now remembering that I had this, what I thought was a pretty good insight. I'm guessing that double deciders have this kind of sense of so you got your you know your your bell curve or whatever here and i'm guessing that in terms of what people do double deciders have a sense of middleness like what what's in the middle here what's the majority of people doing based on you know between two extremes so they'll have a sense of, so then when a, somebody is like such an outlier here, um, I feel like for myself, when I, when I, uh, I feel like to me, or <laughs> for, for double deciders who interact with me, I feel like I'm a sort of novelty in a lot of ways. Um, because I am just me, and I do the things I do for my reasons. And I'm not aware of this middle, nor am I trying to find even the middle. I'm just, I'm just, okay, this is me, this is why I do what I do, you know, and like this whole bell curve is, it's not really relevant to me. So, um, so double deciders, I feel like they, uh, that's just my impression, um, that, that um, they, they see me and I kind of entertain them. Because they're like, this guy is just out there. <clears throat> but now I'm starting to see, like, why that is. Why, like, okay, they can see this, they can see, this is where most people are. And most people are trying to be in the middle, I think. They're trying to blend in, in their way. You know, they, everybody has their little idiosync idiosyncrasies, but it's... It's it's uh, you know it's you know a little bit here on here and there on either side of the middle, but then you have the other people who are just you know just doing what they're doing. You know you got your the negatives of you know like hoarders or uh, you know uh, I don't even know I can't think of it right now. But yeah, so I don't know. That's uh, that's kind of my thoughts and observations on double deciding as it is. Um, yeah, just thought I'd share. Maybe uh, it'll help somebody. All right, take it easy.